This is the continuation of linear search versus binary search. So in the linear search versus binary search video, I discussed about using the methods of searching and there were two. So one was linear and one was binary. And we discussed how slow linear search can get when the data file exceeds, it could just grow exponentially. So to cover that, we have binary search and there are drawbacks to it that you need the list sorted in order for that to work. But uh, as a result, you could get uh, operations done really quickly. So that was the previous video and I encourage you to watch the video before heading over to this video. So uh, before you like uh, go any further, I would like you to subscribe to the channel that really boosts the channel's momentum and the consistency as well. So um, thank you. Take your part by subscribing to the channel and let's continue to this video. So first what, what you're going to do is basically I'm going to now extend my code. So the previous code I had was just reading an array, right? So the array had just 10 numbers or something. But now I wanted to do is that I wanted to read from an external file or something like a text file through file handling. So through that I use the uh, hash include file stream header file. Okay, so I use this chrono to tell my time and everything. And what I did is basically um, this is the exact same code that I had with the previous, which was the search function. What it did is that it had to accept an array, have a size of n, and text the number of x. So what it did is basically go from i, and now it says over here i is equal to 0, i is less than n, and i++. plus plus. Notice that I didn't declare this inside of my for loop. That's why I needed the scope of this, so that I could return, or I could manipulate through this. So what I did is basically, if array sub i is equal to x, meaning that if that element is found in that specific index, this element is found in whatever index it is, return that index, and if you cannot find it, just return minus one, indicating that the element does not exist in the array. So now, the special part to this code is that I'm gonna use file handling to read my array. I'm not gonna be explicitly typing into my text file as hard-coded, but I'm gonna link this file to some external txt file or csv file which will have billions of uh, code or billions of data or maybe lo lower than that but what what the thing is that it's going to read through it and it's going to tell me where the location of that data file is and how much time it took so let's say in nums in file so basically this is going to tell me the number in file so i created these two functions and let me just uh, go through that bef later right now what i the main aspect that i have to go through is this so over here is my main driven logic and now what i have here is that pointer to int array and then it has this read data file function now before i just had just random array i used to explicitly type over here like like, um, let's say int array and then I used to have something inside of it like this but in this particular case I'm not gonna do this I'm gonna read a larger file so even larger file and what we're gonna do with this is that we're gonna do a pointer to int array so now it's gonna be a pointer as not as compared to what we're doing because we're storing this in the heap so we're gonna get a, some kind of memory address from this read data file so when we look at this read data file um, and it's over here so this is all actually returning um, a pointer so and what it does is that it's file streams is opened and the name of files in i file so that's okay now what happens is that the string data file and you say enter the name of the text file to read now you could do like this or you don't have to actually even do this uh, because it does sometimes take time. So like I could just explicitly tell that I have a file that has a name, let's say data hyphen file one dot CSV. So this is my file name and this is what I have to read. So I could just write that inside without even asking uh, what name of the file you could do. This is just extra, extra stuff if you want. So if file dot fail, so if the file doesn't load, What's going to happen is that you could say invalid file name and exit so another way to do this is you could just say something like one of the ways is like that so another way to do this is like if the i file um dot end of file so so if the file or this is not the case but if i say dot is underscore good right this is the code so if it's is underscore good, 
So if it's not is underscore good, so what's the case for that? There's gonna be a particular case. So that's what it's gonna say and it's just gonna do the same thing. It's just an alternative way to say that. But over here what we did is if file dot, uh, if I file dot fail, so it says invalid file name and line and it's gonna exit zero, so it's just gonna terminate out. So what, hap what happens here is that we have this particular case and this particular case says that I create a dynamic array all right, and then it's a pointer to int, and it just creates and allocates memory from the heap. So it says new int, and then I put subscripts inside, and I said nums in file. So notice that I didn't type in the numbers I know. I don't know because I have to. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. Now it doesn't mean that I necessarily have to read every single text in this specific file. I I can't read all of this. I'm a human man, I'm not a computer. So I leave this job to the computer to read every single number inside of this. And through that I just write a code, a basic function that will allow me to do that. So for that particular case, I created this function called nums in file. So this nums in file you were wondering before that why did I include this? This is just to read or count the numbers in the text file. So input file stream i file and i file dot open. This is the data file one dot csv file just like that implicitly included. Outside for loop scope we have int i and we say int num is equal to zero. So this is just two numbers. Numbers just num is just gonna be zero over here in this particular case. So what it's gonna say is four i is equal to zero. So uh, i file dot good um, I, I, as well as the file is good. So I believe it wasn't is underscore good. It was good. Uh, yeah, in some cases it's good or it's, uh, whatever it is. So this actually worked for me. So I wrote good. Ignore if I said is underscore good. And then we have I++, so we say I file, and then we say um, this uh, extraction operator, and then we get the number. So whatever the number is appearing in these ints, notice that the numbers that were in the text file were just integers, whole numbers. So I just created a data type of int. If there were doubles, then you had to use doubles. Whatever it is, so over here you have to do is uh, just read it inside, and then just ignore one. Because of that space, you see this comma, so this is a comma separated value so I could just ignore that and just read these numbers until the numbers are finished or the end of file program reaches right here at the end. So I'm, I don't have to basically count, the program is gonna do it for me and it's just gonna return the i. So you could just say i over here and it's just gonna tell me how many times, so just telling how many times the numbers appeared. Because of this loop is just iterating so I didn't have to explicitly define a variable called count because this i is doing my task for me. So after returning i in nums and files, so I basically get that number specified here and that uh, term memory is created in the heap. So what I do is int num is equal to zero. So I assign num as zero, then I say for int i is equal to zero and you can see that the end of file did not appear and then you say i++. So what are you gonna do over here? I'm basically gonna say something over here which is i file num, so it's gonna read the number again, i file dot ignore one of the characters and my uh, dynamic array sub i so the first item in that dynamic array this one is going to equal to num so that's that's it basically um, you basically fed the content which was in a text file to this dynamic array that pointer that ha could have so much data so all of that is just basically going to be transferred inside of this we're going to close this and we're going to return the dynamic array. So once we di clo uh, return this dynamic array to the function, so which is over here in my main driven logic, um, it's over here. So uh, imagine that we have some array and it has just so much numbers. So we cannot imagine how much it is, but they're just all fed inside of it. So th this this asterisk, so we say ARR contains that much numbers. Now for instance, I just wanna find some kind of random number like five, uh, 55,541 which does include inside of the text file so what I could do is basically ignore these uh, comments I would just add these are just extra stuff we could do this auto start high resolution clock now uh, I just found this stuff on the internet just to uh, detect time you could take uh, you could use whatever you would like this uh, really works too uh, as well so int result is just gonna be so this is the function called for the result so I'm gonna use the search and we're doing linear search so we're gonna say array what's the number nums in file which is the, which tells us how many numbers are in the file. This is gonna be the array, this is gonna be the size of the array, and this is the element that we need to find x. So that is, the result is gonna be inside of this variable, and then what happens is that 
After that, we use the stop, uh, auto stop, just to tell the stop the timer. So from this to this, and then we use this ternary operator um, that allows us to have return types for two same exact, um, I would say data types. So you could just say return is not a, uh, present in array if it does not exist. If it does exist, element is present at index and tells us the index to that. So what is going on here in the search? So imagine that we have this array, uh, this dynamic array fed into it. We have nums and files, so just so many numbers. And then we have this X. Now, what happens is that if we go to this search linear search function, which is on the top, we have this array and we just basically do the same thing. What I said, the basic for loop and it just reads the file. If it doesn't appear, we just return minus one. That's gonna appear in this, um, in this section over here as the result. So if the result is minus one, it's gonna print out element is not present in the array. If it is a pres if it's not minus one, so if it is, it's this, and if it is, if it's not minus one, so it's gonna print element as present and it's gonna return the result index. So that's that because of the return type. And then after that, get the duration. So we have auto duration, uh, duration underscore cast, and we could do in microseconds. So you could just do in any kind of seconds you want. Over here I have nano seconds or whatever seconds. Uh, I'll go with microseconds. And now it's just gonna subtract stop minus start because we know that the final time minus the initial time will give us the total durated time duration time so that's that's how we calculate duration time and now you could just say time taken by function duration dot count which is um it's going to tell us the microseconds count so this is just a function used through the auto thing so after that once you're done this is the most important thing of the code is that you have to delete your dynamically allocated arrays through this delete subscript and then you have ARR semicolon. This is very, very important. Do not forget to do that because that could cause really unnecessary uh, results and it could also cause problems to your code. So just remember to deallocate memory once you allocate and then just to like remove anything else and you know, memory leaks, you don't wanna do that. So now let's just run this code. So I could run this through this IDE. So I have this option here, which is um, when I right click my code, uh, I do have an option, which is says run code over here. So it's gonna pop up my terminal. And you can see that it's asking me for something basically. Now look how long that took. Now element is present at the index. It found some kind of index, which was 2460. And time taken by the function was this much microseconds. Now that's a lot of time, right? So this was linear search. How slow did that process take? 